In this printing masterclass, I'll be showing you how to get the best scans using an Epson flatbed scanner and optimize the images ready for printing. I'll show you the best settings to use for scanning both traditional photographic prints and film. But before we start, let's ensure the scanner is ready. One of the biggest enemies for photographers is dust and dust on the scanner surface will show up as little white dots on your scans. So make sure that all the corners and the entire surface is clean and you can use one of these blowers really handy for shifting dirt. But if you have got some stubborn dirt on this platen, then use a good soft cloth, a lint-free cloth is ideal and this one is actually designed for LCD screens and it will actually clean up beautifully and it won't leave any little cotton fibres on the surface either. And if, just to make sure you can actually give it another puff around there. If you do have some stubborn items then you can use a good LCD screen spray and use this sparingly because you don't want the, uh, the liquids to seep in through the sides there and again make sure that this is well cleaned off and then allow it to evaporate for a few minutes afterwards because you don't want your photograph sticking to the surface. There we go. Many of the more advanced flatbed scanners also offer a film scanning capability and this is actually achieved through the transparency unit that sits on top of your scanner. Now you can actually scan 35mm film, medium format or large format with some of the more advanced models. And in order to activate this, you need to take off the protective or reflective cover on the scanner. And this reveals our glass platen here. And we must also ensure that this is meticulously clean because with film scanning we're going to be using very high resolution so that means any small particles of dust will actually show up as football-like shapes on the film scans. It's quite handy to be able to load up several transparencies in one go. And as you may notice, all these transparencies have been placed in a horizontal orientation. Even though the pictures are upright, we can place them in a horizontal orientation. And this will actually make it for a quicker scanning because the scanner pass only has to go a short distance between the top and the bottom of each transparency. As with your glass plates, just make sure that each transparency is meticulously clean and that just means blowing the front and the back of each transparency and this will save many hours of retouching time on the computer later on. For any stubborn dust that won't shift, be shifted by the blower, use a soft brush just to gently wipe the transparency down and then finally just give another blow and that should shift everything. And now the transparency holder can be placed on the glass platen. Ready for scanning. So now we've loaded our transparencies into the film holder and we've placed it on the flatbed scanner and I've launched the Epsom scanning software. We've got four different modes we can choose from. We've got the full auto mode, home mode, office mode and professional mode. So we're going to select the professional mode and this will give us plenty of options now for making adjustments to our scans. So let's take a look and the document type we've set up reflective which is for scanning in printed material. Um, we don't want that we're going to go to film with holder so click on there and we can select a film type. Well I've got slides in here which is positive film. The other options are color negative or black and white negative films. I'm going to leave the resolution for the time being set at 300 dpi although this is not the best setting to use but I'll come back to that. So now let's generate a preview of our slides. Now this has taken a minute or so and it's generated thumbnails of all the slides that we've got on our flatbed scanner. Now we can scan in every single slide or we can select the slides we want to scan in. The easiest way to do this is click on select all frames and we can check or uncheck one of the boxes there and all the boxes will be unchecked. This is the slide I want to scan in so click on there and I'm going to go into the normal view mode. I don't particularly want this one. So let's go into normal view. Now we can see all the transparencies in one go. And I'm just going to select this one here and just make a rough outline on this. 
and then we're going to zoom in and I want to rotate it in the right way. So now we're looking at the picture in the correct orientation. Um, as you can see, my scanner is far too big. I'm scanning in too much of the mount. So now we can fine tune this and with the enlarged view, it's much easier to be very precise about how we're going to crop the picture. OK, so let's go back to the other side here. And I said the resolution, we needn't worry too much about this at the moment. So we've got two ways of doing this. We can click on the target size. And at the moment, the target size is going to be a 35 mil frame, which is not going to be much use to anybody. So we could alter the scale um, in percentage terms, or we can select what size we want the final output to be. I'm going to work in inches here. As this, I'm familiar with that at the moment. As you can see, it's less than one inch wide and just over one and a third inch high. So I actually want to fit it into a frame, say a 10 by 8 frame. So we'll just select 10 inches there or type in 10 inches and the width will automatically go accordingly. So that's 10 inches by 6.68 inches high. And we've now got a scale of 732 percent. So this is going to, we can actually now scan in the picture to match maybe a photo frame that we have. Another way of doing this is to actually go to the resolution. So I'm going to put this back to 100%. And now I'm going to change the resolution. So let's choose a higher resolution. And I'm going to go to 3200. I just happen to know that this is a good optical scanning resolution for this particular scanner. Make note of the optical resolution of your scanner. Many scanners will claim that they're 9600 DPI. This may be an interpolated resolution. Generally speaking, somewhere around the 3200 or 4800 for 35 mil will be fine. So I'm going to select 3200. Now, if you notice, it's still going to give me the same size scan at the end, but it's at 3200 DPI. And I'll show you later on how we can alter this in our image editing application. Moving further down, we've got unsharp masking. Now, generally speaking, scans can be quite soft, especially flatbed scanning. Um, unsharp masking will add a little bit of sharpness to it. Now, in this particular scanning software, we've got three settings. We've got low, medium and high. And this doesn't give you a lot of choice. So for this scan here, I'm going to actually uncheck the unsharp mask and I'm going to apply sharpening within my image editing application. I'm also going to leave all the color settings set to neutral and I'm going to alter the colors again in my image editing application. Let's go further down here and most transparencies and film will have some element of dust on them. Um, no matter how, how, how well you clean them, there's always going to be that speck of dust on there. There is a software dust removal. This doesn't, necess this doesn't always work out very well. A better way to do it is to use the digital ice. And um, we've got two options. We've got quality or speed. And we're going to go for quality. Now, this is a very effective way of removing dust from your transparencies. But your scanner must be able to support the digital ice technology, which uses an infrared scanning pass. Um, the only downside of using digital ice is that it does extend the scanning time considerably. But it will save you a lot of time retouching later on. So we're pressed on the scan button now. We've got everything set. And now we're asked for a file name that we give it. So I'm going to call this a guard. And we can also choose which folder we want to place our scan into. So I'm going to place it into a folder called scans there and say OK. And also we can select the image format. Now, there's several options, bitmap, JPEG, and TIFFs. The best way is to actually scan in as TIFF, and this, this will guarantee that the file maintains all the image detail. There's no compression applied. And most image editing applications and also page layout applications will recognize a TIFF file. So we select TIFF, and we'll just click OK, and the scan will commence. Now, this will take some time, so I'm going to skip straight to the final result. 
So now we've opened our scan into our image editing application. The first thing I need to do is actually trim off some of the excess black slide mount that we've incorporated into the scan. Although we were fairly precise at the scanning stage, I wasn't 100% precise mainly because I know I can get a more accurate crop within my image editing application. So we select the crop tool and we just pull in the sides here to remove that black edge of the slide mount. And there we go. And a little bit off the top, not very much, just a fraction. There we go. And we'll click the arrow key to say yes, that's OK. So now most flatbed scanners will not produce the same sort of quality as a dedicated film scanner, but we can improve the scan considerably. Let's take it to 100% magnification, double click on the magnifying glass and we reposition it slightly. You can see the buttons are looking slightly soft and we can fix that by going to our filter, sharpen and select unsharp mask. This brings a dialog panel up and we can see that the button is looking rather soft here. There's no detail on there. So let's take the sharpening amount right up to the very top 500%. And you can see now there's considerably more sharpness appeared into the scan. The scanner, flatbed scanner, will actually extract quite a lot of detail from your scans. So don't be afraid to push it up high. We can also adjust the radius. If we go too high in the radius, you may start seeing a very brash looking image. So really something like around about the 1.4 will give it sufficient sharpness. And if we turn the preview on and off, you can see on the left there just how much detail is being pushed into the image through this unsharp masking. So we click OK and we'll accept that. So the, the next stage now is to optimize our image ready for printing. So we go to image, image size. And let's have a look at this. I'm going to work in inches here. And we can see that the width of this is just less than one inch, 0.894 by height of 1.3, with a resolution of 3200 dpi. Now this is actually going to produce a small 35 millimeter um, size print. And we don't want that. But what we can do is we'll uncheck the resample box here. And we can now put in the, the dimensions of the print we want. So we want a, we've got a 10 inch high frame. So we're going to just type in 10 into the height box there. And that's automatically changed the width to 6.65 inches. And it's also changed the resolution. So now this gives me a lot of options. If I now want to produce, say, a 16 inch high print, we just type in 16 inches and we've still got a resolution of 268 DPI, which is pretty good, actually, in fact. And we'll click OK for that. Now you won't notice anything changing here at all. This will happen at the printing stage. So we go to File, Print. And we can see that the printer setup is set to our default printer, which is the Epson Stylus Pro. Color handling, at the moment it's set the printer manager's colors. I want to actually choose my own profile, so I'm going to select Photoshop manager's colors. And now here in the printer profile, we can either select any custom profile that we have, or we can choose from some of the pre preset um, profiles that are included with the printer driver. And I've selected the premium glossy photo paper. Now the one thing you must ensure that you do is go up to the print settings, which opens the printer's dialog panel and make sure that the media type is correctly set. So we've got premium glossy photo paper, that's correct, color, speed. And this is the important bit, make sure that this is set, the mode is set to off, no color adjustment. And this prevents the printer driver from actually applying a profile. We're letting Photoshop apply the profile in this particular case. And below here, size. Well, at the moment, we've got an A4 size page set up, which if you look on the actual preview here, we can see we're not seeing the entire image. So let's go to the paper size, A series, and we've got Super A3 
select it and we'll say OK on that. Now we can see that the preview has actually rescaled itself down to fit the, the media. If you want to actually fill the entire media, well, you could adjust it in the image size or we could do scale to fit media there and that will automatically adjust the print size to match the media that's being used. But we did select a height of 16 inches by 10 inches. So I wanted this whiteboard here. It gives me plenty of room to add a signature. And the next thing to do is just press the print button. For scanning in photographs, we need to change the document type to reflective. And now we can press the preview button. Now you can have multiple photographs on the flatbed scanner surface, obviously depending on the size of the pictures. Here we've got four images on there. I can individually select which print I want to scan in. So if we just draw a marquee around the print, and now I'm going to zoom in on this one. And now we can refine this selection or the marquee around the picture and just drag in the sides just to scan in the area we want. If you notice, as I'm drawing in here, the image itself is changing in coloration and tonality. And this is because we've got an auto exposure color correction applying each time. And I don't want that. I want to be able to select my own coloring. So I'm going to click on the reset button here. And this takes the, the print back to its natural default stage. But we've got quite a cream cast on here and this is because the print's very old itself. So we'll click on the histogram and now we can select the white tool for adjust the highlight. And I'm going to click on the white because I want a pure white. So we we'll click on a white area and this windscreen on the car looks white. And now we've got a pure black and white print. And we can alter the tonality on that by adjusting the mid-tone here and just lighten up the the dark suit there so we've got a little bit of detail on there and that's looking okay so we will close that. Now the print itself is only two inches by three inches so it's a very small print but if we look down at the bottom here we can see that this scan size is going to produce a 194 megabyte file which is enormous and we don't want that and the reason for that is that we've got the resolution still set at the film scanning resolution and we don't need that much resolution for print scanning in fact we can reduce that right down to 300 dpi and that's be more than sufficient so now if i look at the dimensions i'll look at this in inches we can see it's two inches by three inches but i want something a little bit bigger than that so i'm going to actually change this to say six inches high and that should automatically change the width here to four inches. So we've got six inch by four inch print. And if we look at the scale, it's going to increase the scale by 192%. And that should be more than sufficient. So now we can click on the scan button. And we'll save this as a prefix, my grandfather. And we can choose a folder where we want to save the scans into. And I've got a folder here called scans. Say OK and image format we'll save it again as a tiff if you have shorter space you could save it as a jpeg file select the options here now you can have your different levels of compression there's high quality to the left and lower quality to the right but i would suggest that actually any scans scan them in as a tiff and that will give you a little bit more leeway to do some manipulation work so okay on that and now it's just going to scan in the print for you. And there we go, ready for printing.